What's up, Salt Strong Nation? Joe Simons, Lake Diamonds. A little bit different <laughs> atmosphere today. I'm Sir. here with my main man, Troy. Kind of a cool backstory. He reminded me you came to one of our events back in like 2016 at Picnic Island with your yeah, wife. It was a while ago. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And now here you are, head chef, executive chef Sir. here at Crab and Fan. Yep. And we're doing some cooking. We're yeah. going to do a couple different ones, but we're going to start with some snapper. That's right. So what's the deal? What, what are we uh, What are we cooking up? Um, we've got some whole uh, lane snapper out of Key West. I'm trying to keep this to what you guys can do at home. Um, you know, you can do mangrove snapper, obviously, yellowtails, reds, whatever you want to do. Um, we do whole snapper here a lot. Um, it's very popular in a lot of the European countries and we do sell quite a bit of them. Um, and it's just real simple. You know, you just got to be careful about the bones and you can do it any way you want. This one we're going to show you, we're going to do a little bit of a tropical Florida flair. Um, I'll show you how to clean this guy up. And it really is, like I said, it's, it's pretty simple and non-messy. If you want to be uh, keep it clean, it's pretty easy to do that way. So I'll, I'll be honest, I get a little intimidated when it comes to doing whole fish just because I don't have the experience. Right. What are what are some of the biggest mistakes? Like where, where do you screw up when you're going whole fish? Um, it's not... It's not easy to screw up. Um, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I can Basically, screw up anything when it comes to You just to want cooking. to make, make sure that it's nice and fresh. And if you guys catch it yourself, obviously, it's going to be real fresh. But yep. the way to do that, you check the eyes, the player to the eyes, make sure they're not sunken in. They get nice in there, Cody. And, uh, check out those nice eyes. Nice and hydrated and clear. So what would it look like if, if it was uh, they'd, not they'd fresh? Kind of dehydrated and sunken in and cloudy. Okay. Um, so if you're buying your fish, that's definitely one of the first things you want to check. Also, if you get in here, gills are nice and red. You know, they, they turn up brownish gray if they're so not if you fresh, see any kind of brownish right or graying, then you've got a fish that you might not want to be yeah, taking home. It's probably a few days out of the water. This guy was swimming around yesterday. Got it. Um, you know, and basically fish shouldn't stink. Fish shouldn't stink unless they're old. They should right. smell like the ocean. And it smells like the ocean. Yeah, we get we get all of our fish daily. We get um, six days a week. We get deliveries on fish. We get them all around the world and mostly whole so we can inspect them. Obviously, we're not getting whole tunas, whole swordfish, or anything like that. But uh, the majority of our fish are whole, so we can inspect and make sure the quality is good and uh, go from there. You know, we have our own porters. They come in, they cut all the fish all day long, and it's a, it's a nice little operation we got. Cool. All right, so what do we do? What's the first step in terms of uh, prep? Let all me right. get out of your way What here. you're going to want to do, um, let me grab this guy. He's already been scaled. So we got a couple of them. All right, so, so you talk scale about this. Them. Yeah, scaling. You want to scale the fish, which I had this one done ahead of time. Um, so can we put them side by side so they can yeah. see what the difference looks like? Yes. So that's... You're just going to see it's it's more shiny. Um, you know, it's better for video presentation. <laughs> uh, so this one, to save a little time, I had scaled ahead of time. But you can see the difference. Um, and scales are not good to eat, so you want to get rid of them. Um, and you can see these guys have already been eviscerated. And so real quick, it, some tips on scaling for those that have not done that before. You can buy... Uh, scalers at Walmart for like two or three bucks and basically they're just a little toothed thing that you just you want to go against the grain with them you can see the scales here I can do a little bit with the knife but they just come off like that okay if you want to just get after it like that it's a little messy that's why I had it done ahead of time <laughs> um, they will fly everywhere uh, but you can even do it with like I showed you the back of a knife or a, a spoon the spoon works great actually um, that's the way I prefer to do it uh, again this one's done ahead of time, so we'll put this guy aside. Stick him out here for people to see. All right, so we got a scaled snapper. Yep. Now what, what next? What we do, and you can go as far with this as you want, but what we do is we take off these little fins just because they're kind of in the way. These guys, because they're nice and sharp, and they'll stick you. Get rid of those. Same with this. And, and we're doing this on podcast as well, so for people listening... Uh, you're just using some normal kitchen scissors here. Yeah, these are Mundial. Um, you do need some sharp scissors, but anything anything nice and sharp and strong will work. I actually get my guys some from uh, Home Depot. They're Weiss scissors. Just got to be, you can use poultry shears, which is actually what these are. But to get through those spines, they need to be pretty tough. Um, the only other thing we got to do here is we rip out the gills. Because when gills cook, just like the guts, they stink. Hmm. So we'll get rid of those. Any secret here or just get nope. your hands and get just dirty? get in there and get them. Okay. So there you have a fully dressed, ready to cook snapper. It's that simple. Yep, that's it. 
there you go. Now you can do that any, any way you want. You can throw it on the grill, you can fry it, you can bake it, however you want to do it. Um, we'll get back in the kitchen in a little bit and we'll show you how we're going to do it. We're going to go with a nice little Florida flare. Um, but like I said, any way you want to do it, fried is nice. Fry it up nice and crispy. Grill, you get the nice char, you can do it outside. Any way you want to do it. So we're keeping this nice and simple today. And so uh, if, if someone caught theirs fresh out on their boat, anything else we're going in here removing? Is there any other step? Had you not bought this in a uh, market? Other than, other than the guts. Yeah. You know, we got all that out. Yep. Um, I like to leave the tail and the dorsal on just for presentation. Okay. Uh, it looks kind of cool coming out on the plate like that. You know, we don't have to eat the head. Sometimes people ask for us to cut the heads off. That's fine. But it's just a presentation thing. Whole fish. It's not whole if it doesn't have a head on it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So what next? Uh, take it in the back? Yeah, we'll take this guy to the back and we'll Sweet. put this up in here, here in a minute. We got our lane snapper that we prepped earlier. Nice and clean, ready to go. What we'd like to do is uh, fry it a little bit first. It'll give it a head start on the cooking and then it'll also, when it goes in the oven to finish, it'll render it a lot more crispy on the skin. You've got a ton of flavor in skin. That's one of the good reasons for doing whole fish. Some people like it, some people don't. I do. Um, there's more flavor in the skin of fish than the meat itself. So cooking it on will lend to more flavor of the meat. Uh, so what we'll do, we'll just dredge it a little bit in some flour. This is seasoned flour, no more than a little salt and pepper. And, and so Troy too, if someone doesn't have a fryer at home, what's, what's the... Again, you can throw the, it on the grill. Okay. You can, you can sear it in a pan. Um, if, I, if I wasn't doing it in the fryer and finishing the oven, I would probably throw it on the grill personally. Okay, got it. Um, and how long in general? Uh, these take a little longer to cook. You're looking at between 10 and 15 on them. Okay. Just because they're whole and they got, you know, they got a thickness to them. And um, are you going high heat? Yeah, yeah, same deal. Middle of uh, this oven over here is about 500 degrees. 500, also. okay. Yep. So what we'll do, we'll give, give this guy a head start in the fryer. Get them nice and crisp up. So how, how long in the fryer? Uh, just a few minutes, three minutes or so. Okay. Hey, Vic. Vic. Oh. Get it nice and, uh, now, get it if, nice and happy. Even if you listen to the podcast, you can hear that. <laughs> That's a happy fish. Yeah. Happy customer. You know, and if you, those of you that are a little more health conscious, you want to just do it in the grill or in the oven, that's fine too. But we like crisp, um, and it just gives it a cool look. It looks nice and crispy. It gets it kind of, just gets the whole fish happy and ready to go. Yep. And, and when you say go on the grill, this is still kind of the prep. You're st always still going to put it in the oven. Like the grill is just to yeah, get yeah. it started. I mean, or you can, you can do it the whole time on the grill, but you're going to want to do a lower heat. Okay. Um, you know, if you set your grill at about 350 or so, you'll probably be able to cook the whole thing on the grill. Um, and, and how long in, in general? Probably five or six minutes to a side. Okay. Um, just throw them on there and, and by shutting your lid on your grill, it's going to keep a lot of that heat in and it's going to cook faster. Here we don't have lids. Um, we just get them nice and charred up and throw them in the oven to finish. And so the other option is to go... Oh, yeah, check out that bad cool. boy. So that was it, that was quick. That's it, we just get it started, okay. get a little flavor onto it, and we'll finish it up in the oven. Check on him about 10 minutes or so. All right, so going back to the grill, someone, assuming some of us have a fryer at home, yeah. which most of us don't. So gr grill, grill, high heat, yep. short amount of time, uh, assuming we're still gonna put it in the oven. Yes, Okay. yes. It, basically what you're doing with that, what you're doing with the fryer, what you're doing with the pan, what you're doing with the grill, um, if you're gonna finish it in the oven, is you're gonna get your color, your texture and whatever flavor it may be. The grill is gonna give you a char flavor. So basically, if you're running high heat on the grill and you're gonna finish in the oven, you can blast that thing as high as you want. Just get some color on either side, yeah. get some char, get some crisp, and take it off and throw it in the oven. That, yeah. or if you wanna turn your grill down and pop your lid closed, do the same thing. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Which, What's you your start. favorite if you were at home and didn't have all, the, all this? If I were at home, I'd probably do it on the grill. You know, we, we like way? grilling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cause you'll still, if you leave it on there long enough, you'll still get that desired char. Yep. Um, the whole color effect, all that, um, basically flipping it once or twice through, uh, it'll get you there. Um, and then you don't have to mess up two different pieces of equipment or a five pan or <laughs> yeah. anything like that. 
you know, cooking at home is a different animal. You want Sounds to like you're like me. Clean. You're you're always thinking, hey, do I have to clean all this stuff afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You know, at home we don't have uh, we don't have the cleanup crew that we have here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got a lot of people working here, man. This yeah. Is, yeah. It's a busy place. Yeah, nice. Because you have to, and you're doing that many We do. Um, that many different menu changes. This and... time of year, um, we'll do anywhere between two and four hundred covers for lunch and at dinner, uh, typically between three hundred and five hundred. Uh, we have a full line. You know, I'll have five guys on this line. We'll have a guy or two out at Raw Bar. It's it's a big animal. Yeah. You gotta you gotta keep it well staffed to keep it going and functioning right. Man. So for this snapper. We're gonna do this nice and tropical, um, nice Florida flavors. We got some mango with some spice, soy. Now this is actually a chilled dish. Everything on this dish is chilled, so it's a really good summertime dish. Eat outside, drink a cold beer, whatever you want to do. All right, we got some soba noodles here with some julienne vegetables that we are gonna dress with a uh, pad thai sauce. This is basically a little bit of a spicy peanut sauce. Oh yeah. We'll dress it up real nice. You guys, you guys make it your own, or yep, we make uh, everything, okay. everything scratch here. Get this nice and mixed up. Drop this in the plate. So again, everything on this dish is chilled. You can do it, heat it up, however you want. Uh, we prefer to do it cold, um, just because it is a nice time summer dish. Which here in Florida is. All year round. Yeah, exactly. What do we get? I got my, short, got my shorts on right now. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be winter time. All right. Also, what we got going on here is we got a uh, mango habanero puli. This is basically just mango cooked down with some rice wine vinegar, uh, fresh habanero, and hit with just a tiny little bit of sugar and salt. Um, mm. Real simple, real clean. People hear habanero and they freak out. It's, oh my God, it's going to be so spicy. We keep it uh, pretty mellow. You know, it's gonna have a little bit of flavor on it. It's gonna have a little bit of heat, but nothing crazy. It's not gonna leave you burning. Uh, what we do, we'll just drizzle a little bit of this on the plate. Also, we got some uh, house-made sweet soy. I make this with um, soy sauce, obviously, some fresh lemon, some octopus heads, and sugar. We let that simmer down for a while and come together. Gives you a little bit of a thicker, uh, more here, complex. Here you flavor. say octopus head. Yeah, <laughs> we serve octopus here, so and I, I try and use everything I can from everything we get in. Too cool. So take the heads, throw it in there. It gives you another depth of flavor, uh, and we will just put that on there. Oh yeah, look at that artist. Yeah. We also like to serve this with a little charred lime. You know, you got to get uh, got to get fancy. <laughs> Get some gold, gold what what percentage here. of your customers actually uh, eat that? The flour? Yeah. Uh, it is marketed as an edible flour, and you see it in a lot of places. I don't see many people eating it. Yeah, so that's, I was wondering. I, for, uh, I, I have heard of people eating it, and I was like, well, man, uh, I'm going to leave mine there and <laughs> return it. Yeah, it's it's an edible orchid. Um, so here's our plate. We'll get the snapper going on that in just a second. Man. All right, here you go. Here's your, uh, here's your laying snapper hole, all cleaned up. Ready to go. Just pop it on the plate like that. And uh, you do have Ooh. your charred lime. Gives it a little bit more of a nutty flavor. You yeah. can feel free to sprinkle that over the top and uh, just get after it, man. This mango habanero, not real spicy, but it just gives it a nice little pop, accents everything, everything kind of complements each other. And you got a, a nice summer dish. I'm curious, where, where do you, when you dig into this, where do you start? I go right in, man. Right I go in. right in here in the right front part in. of the meat. Um, you know, you do have to tell people you got to be careful of the bones. People yep. are inexperienced eating whole fish. Yeah. But anybody that typically orders a whole fish, they've ordered whole fish before. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. There are people that are a little intimidated or turned off by it, but you really don't get much more flavor out of a fish than doing it this way. You know, you make your fish stocks with the bones and the heads. Yeah. So all that flavor translates into this dish and into the flesh. As you mentioned, the skin too. I mean, the, yep. the taste on that. Yeah. Skin is skin is flavor. I mean, yeah. you can think of it of. Uh, as basically fish bacon you know it's got a lot of your oil a lot of your fats are in the skin salmon skin being one of the best um you know a lot of times i'll take the salmon skin and fry it up and it gets that natural it, salt it tastes like bacon it right does, i mean it, it yeah does. it really does it's got almost a uh yeah i mean it's i call it fish bacon yeah you know and yeah. it's, it makes a nice garnish um same thing with any other fish skin it's you know and also it's prettier man <laughs> you got nice white fillets of meat yeah 
but you also got some color on it. And if you don't want to eat it, slide it right off. Comes yeah. right off. It looks so good, man. All right, so we're going to have to taste this here. Yeah, you that. guys get in, man. Go ahead and have lunch. What do you think, Cody? Camera guy's <laughs> like, oh, yeah. All right, we are out of the kitchen here, Crab and Finn. We are in the main dining room. You can see here we have this beautiful Snappa. Look at that presentation. And the moment of truth. It's about to happen here. Cody? Get after it, Joe. Dude. So if you guys have, um, I don't know, depending on... Oh, yeah. Oh, get some of the bone out of the way. Yeah, you are going to have bones with whole fish. Oh, man. Dude, that is smooth, brother. Love the skin. Love how smooth this is. Oh, my gosh. Cody, you're going to dig this, dude. <laughs> so now i got to dip some in the... Yeah. You so got I did a, a plain. house made sweet soy and uh, mango habanero coolie. So I did a plain. So you guys can see there, a couple bones sticking out. Just take little small pieces. Yep. I think one of the mistakes I made when I first started doing this was just trying to go in and eat these massive pieces. Just go super small. Take it slow. Mix it in there. Oh, man. Oh, man. That is so good. Yeah, I talked, um, my, uh, I talked my mom into having whole fish one night when man, she came in. I'm really digging this. Uh, I always like to start just like without, you know, too much stuff yeah. on top. Taste it. Holy smokes. Get that little bit that's, of heat. That's, but not hot heat. Not, no, like, hot, no. not like when you said habanero too, I'm thinking like, oh man, no. I'm going to be. We keep it tame. Sweating. Uh, this is really smooth. Hmm, brother. Mm -mm. So what's your favorite type of fish? Whole? Man, uh, so I think good. it's hard to beat a good snapper, whether it be yellowtail or mangrove or lane. Um, it's just kind of what you're into. Snapper are, are really forgiving. They're, they're nice off the grill. They're nice fried. Um, whole fish, I mean, whatever you want to do. I've done sheep's head whole also. And they're, really? They're good, yeah. You know, they're kind of a pain to fillet, so sometimes it's easier to just throw them on the grill. Interesting. And you use the same same kind of sauce? Tell me what they, it was some kind of soy in there too. That's a, uh, you got a house-made sweet soy and the mango habanero coolie. Okay, the mango, okay. Mm -mm -mm. Guys, we're not going to sit here and make you watch me eat this entire <laughs> thing, but I am with the help of Cody here. Really, really amazing. If you haven't already, and if you have, keep coming back in here. I love the fact you guys are changing up the menu so often. It's yep. something new all the time. Um, I could come here every single day and eat. Oh my gosh, that's so good, dude. Come on. So tell everyone hours when uh, to come hours. see you. Um, Hours are from 11.30 to 10, Sunday through Thursday. Friday, Saturday, we're open at 10.30. And Sunday mornings, 11 o'clock, with a little bit of brunch added to the lunch menu. Right here in Sarasota in the heart. I mean, this yep. is such this a is, beautiful area. If you've never been out here to St. Arnold Circle, it's cool to come anyway. You know, yeah. it's, uh, it's cool shopping. A lot of nice restaurants out here. And it's really just something different. You can spend the day out here walking around. A lot of beautiful boats, too, I've noticed. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. You must have driven by Marina Jack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Quite a few nice boats. That's why it yeah. took me so long to get here. I was like, wait a minute. I got to step yeah. over here first. Yeah. But yeah, guys, come check this out. Crab and Finn, Chef Troy, man, just uh, an amazing guy. Uh, you know, we've known each other now for quite a few years. Yeah. And I remember you telling me you were a chef, and then I was like, wait a minute. Like, wait this, a is, this is a yeah. legit place. They and then I come in here hand. today, and wow. All right, we're going to pile it on. Guys, if you haven't already, once again, come check them out. Give them some love. We'll put a whole blog post together on saltstraw.com forward slash podcast. And if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. Go check out that link. Give them some love and come in here. Book a reservation. You guys take reservations? Oh, yeah. Recommended right. this time of year for sure. Even better. Yeah. I love it. We I do uh, it. outside. It's just first come, first serve. Yeah. But rec uh, reservations are recommended because it's the season. We're getting killed. Yeah. <laughs> Cool, brother. You nailed yeah, it, man. man. So Thanks, smooth. Bro. We out. Peace. Hey there, it's Joe Simons, one of the co-founders here at Salt Strong. And have you claimed your free pack of these irresistible Slam Shady Paddle Tail Lures? We designed this lure with over 12,000 serious inshore anglers, including many full-time guides, to go out there and catch more redfish, more speckled trout, more snook, more flounder, more inshore saltwater slams. And if you want a free pack to try out a sample yourself, click down below right now. We have one free pack per angler while supplies last. Click down below right now.